Hello YouTubers, and this is New Trains Part 24. That's right, New Trains Part 24. It's 2015. Why not start the year with a new installment? New episodes of New Trains, and why not start it off with something extraordinarily, epically phenomenal? As you guys can, have, can see, I have another NJT unit in my collection. This is actually my very first NJT uh, F unit. Very nice. This is an Intermountain unit. I bought this from Nicholas Smith Trains in Broomall, PA last night after work. And the unit is exquisite. I mean, the details on it are amazing. They have the de-skirted sides here. And you can see the separation in the fuel tank. Probably not clearly, but it's there. The roof details are amazing. Full and cab interior. And Intermountain actually matched the prototype. And it says NJ Transit right there on the nose. I believe these are I believe these units are former uh, Chicago and Northwestern units. If I'm not mistaken, because that's where the gong bell would be, or I could be wrong. Um, they could be a, another type, they could be from another railroad, but I'm pretty sure they're from Chicago and Northwestern. Um, and I'm also, I think these units were used at a Hoboken terminal, if I'm not mistaken. Um, could be wrong on that. Uh, but uh, this unit is great 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 unit it's got the speed recorder metal grab irons and handrails take a note Atherin you need to catch up with that metal handrails on all your models gotta do that anyway uh, etched metal side grills it's got the close coupling arrangement like all Intermountain F units have and uh, great sounding unit. It's got the loco sound. I think it's the, let me see what sound system this is. This is the, yeah, I think it's got loco, loco sound, loco sound from ESU. And actually, this is actually my first engine with that sound system. I have to admit they sound pretty good. Um, comparable, I would say, to, to, uh, to Tsunami. Uh, I did actually test this unit with my Tsunami Jeep38-2W and I found out that the Tsunami sound decoder, I, I don't know if it's because of the volume or not, but the Tsunami sound decoder is louder, uh, but I can easily change that volume on here, no problem at all. Um, but the advantage with the Loc sound decoder is you can actually, well, let me just do this. Now, do you want to hear jingle bells? You cannot do that with a tsunami decoder. You cannot. The only thing you could do with a sound uh, with a tsunami sound decoder with the horn is this. The long and then the short. That's it. With this Dakota, you can do this. Like, that's cool. Like, really? Tsunami should do that. Come on, Tsunami, you gotta do that. But uh, yeah, anyway, you're probably wondering how I'm actually controlling that. Now, that's something that I'm going to be showing on later in the film. Let's just get the trains out of the way. So let me start this baby up. Nothing like a 567. Okay, let's turn on the number boards first, shall we? Okay. Lighted, illuminated num uh, number boards. Okay. And let's, uh... 
Let's turn on the light, shall we? It's a little dark in here. There we go. So illuminated number boards and the headlight. Very, very nice. Coupler clashing, which is cool. So yeah, this unit has all of them. Let's try the bell. Very, very, very nice. Now, this is not the only train that I got from Nicholas Smith. Let's uh, move down the line, shall we? Yes, I actually got more of the Bachman Double Decker Commuter Coaches. And I'm just going to run the whole train around so you guys can see them all. Oh, we're not done yet, ladies and gentlemen. We are not done yet. I said I got more to show you, right? I told you I bought a lot of commuter coaches. I didn't say how many. Now, the last two I already had. Those are my original ones. The last two I already had. So yeah, I officially now have 10 of these Bachman Double Deck Commuter Coaches. And I'm actually going to turn them into some, well, it, it, it's a common commuter authority, but I'm not going to specify which one it is because there's a lot of them in, in the Northeast region. I'm not going to specify any names or any designations. You guys will have to see these cars when they're completely redone. Uh, the couplers, I'm completely removing the NEM coupler setup. Don't need it. I'm going to body mount or, or, fra or frame mount all the, the cu uh, couplers on them. Uh, this under part of the diaphragm is going to have to be removed for that, but that's okay because I don't need that part. The cars are going to look different anyway. And, uh, yeah. So that's what those cars are going to be used for. And I am going to get more because Nicholas Smith has a few more. I don't... They have a few more. Not many, though. Not many. So I'm going to probably get those next time when I go there. And I also picked up this truck. You've probably been looking at it and wondering why it was in the video. I believe this is a... Yeah, this is a Freightliner. And you're probably saying, oh my god, why did you get a pink truck? I, you know, I... I, I do like some pinks. Um, it's a very nice truck. I like it because of the way it looks. I mean, they even simulated the wood deck or the wood plates on the deck. I mean, it's got the toolboxes. Um, details on the back are exquisite. I mean, the underbody detail. I mean, they really did this this truck right. This is from Tonkin uh, Replicas uh, Inc. I mean, they really did this. Trailer detaches too. Let me see if I can do that. Yep. Trailer detaches. Uh, the 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 cab is die cast, but the chassis is plastic, which I think is kind of silly because if you're gonna make this truck. Make the make the uh, the the chassis uh, die cast, and I gotta snap this together somehow. So I like it. It's got rubber tires, real rubber tires, and it rolls great. Um, I was playing around with it, and I was uh, putting some different loads on it, like this container here. Now this is not my first HO scale old, uh, truck. I have another one that's from uh, Major Wright. 
and they actually did make die cast trucks in HO scale. So this is actually 148 scale. So is this Matchbox truck, by the way. It's pretty close. Well, they're slightly larger, but yeah, this is this this truck here is definitely 148. This Texaco truck from Major Eye. But uh, yeah, very very nice truck. I like it. Had to get it. Now you're probably wondering, is this all that I got? Well, I got more trains, but they're on layaway, so that'll be another new trains installment. But what a way to start the new year off in a new episode. Um, been wanting the NJTF unit for the longest. There was one for sale from a guy on Facebook. Um, I don't know if they were the same numbers or not. Uh, I was going to buy one from them, but I, when I went to Nicholas Smith, they had three of them there. And I said, you know what, I might as well just buy it now. I'm actually going to go back next Friday. I don't know, I'm very tempted, but I might go and buy another one. I don't know. I'm very tempted, people. I'm extremely tempted. Uh, because I like these F units, I like NJT, and honestly, this is... <laughs> I don't remember the last time I saw an NJT F unit, in a, uh, an NJT anything in a store. Like, I have two ALP44s, I have my E unit that I'm making now, and then now I have this, so I have four NJT locomotives in my collection. I eventually definitely want to get the Genesis units and then I want to get the cheap 40PH-2, but that, 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 that's not a big deal right now. Now, you're probably wondering how I'm able to turn off the number boards and turn off the headlights. Well, I said this is a new year, right? Let's look down here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I finally got the notion to go DCC. Finally! I've been saying it and saying it and saying it. This is actually another reason why I went over budget last night. This is exactly the reason why I went over budget. I had, I had a plan. I had a set list. I was only going to buy the commuter coaches, some Amtrak cars, and that F unit, and that truck. But it ended up being... The truck, the F unit, the cars, and this. So I had to put the Amtrak stuff on hold or on layaway. So this is actually what put me over budget. This is exactly what did it. This this is exactly what did it because I saw them testing this unit in the store and I said, you know what? I'm so sick and tired of having sound units. I can't blow the horn. I can't turn on the sander. I can't put the dynamic brake fans on. I can't put the screwing brakes. I'm so sick and tired of that. So I bought it. And I'm glad I did, actually. Cool thing about it is uh, you can put a wireless, you know, you can plug this, plug a wireless controller in here and you can actually control multiple trains on the same track. Another cool feature is it's got a mode button. So this is dual mode, which is basically DCC and sound, or DCC, I should say. And this is standard D or standard DC. So that means I can run both DCC and DC locomotives on for off this power pack. Not at the same time. I have to hit mode, and then the light indicates that's DC. That indicates that's DCC. So, yeah, and that was the coupler clashing. So, uh, yeah, this is my direction. The only thing is, and. I'm, I read the manual on how to use this thing, but I was looking at the Intermountain manual, and they said you had to add the number of the prime mover, and the number of the like you had to you had to hit CV48, then you had to add the number of the prime mover, which this would be 16, and then you had to add the number of the horn or the CV you wanted to change, which I wanted to put the uh, horn number 11 on here. I forget what that was, and then you had to add two other numbers, which would be zero and then hit enter again. I, I honest to God, I don't know how to change the horn on this thing. I was playing around with this thing. I had the momentum going one way and the momentum going the other way. Cool thing about this is, if you hit shift 99, it automatically sets any DCC locomotive back to the default values, which is a good thing because if you play around with this thing too much and you don't know what you're doing, that's your safe point. So I was doing a lot of that last night. Um, I have no idea how to change the horn on this thing, and I really want to change the horns on it because, don't get me wrong, I love the Leslie Honker. It's a nice horn. 
but I want I want something different. You know what I mean? I want something with more tones. You know what I mean? I just I like the I like the five chime air horns. You know what I mean? I like those. I like those or a P3. Well, no, I already have a P3. No, I don't need another P3. No, I, I don't want to get P. I don't want to get come down with P3 syndrome. You know, Leslie P3. No, I don't need that. No, no, I need to get five chime. Either or S like a, like a S five RT or P five or an M three or an M five. Those would sound good in this unit. Those would sound good. Now this is not this this is not the first Intermountain F unit that I got. I do have a Pennsylvania Railroad one, but that's just standard DC. But um, the low sound is really good. I'm really impressed. And you know if I tweak with the volume, I, I honestly believe you really. I honestly believe it sounds just as good as a Tsunami decoder. Um, I do have to do some speed matching because this unit is actually slower than my uh, Atherm Genesis Jeep 38-2W. Not to say that I would run them together, but I'm probably going to take that Jeep 38-2W or both of them and they're going to eventually become commuter locomotives anyway. So I'm going to have to match speed match them because all my passenger and commuter engines are going to have to run together whether it's electric or not because eventually I'm going to simulate a diesel towing an electric or an electric towing a diesel so I'm going to have to speed match them anyway so I might as well do that um, that's going to probably be way way in the future guys so yeah probably have a bigger mustache than anything by then but anyway uh, I just wanted to share this with you guys I hope you guys are enjoying this video because I sure am uh, the limitations with this unit are it can only pull five of these cars for some reason but it's not that the cars are the cars are heavy but they're not overly weighted I think it's because of the axles on them that are the, I mean they're pretty free rolling I mean let me do a demonstration these these are my original cars I don't think Bachman is selling them in the unlettered paint unlettered with the red and blue stripe anymore um, I haven't seen any since but they actually did come in three paint schemes. They came in this one, this one, and the MTA paint scheme, which is down there. Now, that paint scheme actually matches, if I'm not mistaken, a China version with with the China with a China name on it, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, these cars are based off of the the China the China version uh, of the commuter cars. The details are slightly different. Um, the China model actually has finer details than this one version from the Bachman China line actually has way way nicer details than these cars I mean even the even the AC units on the roof I mean they're just there's individual I think the, the grills are etched metal or something but I know they're see-through or something like that but even their AC units are different on the roof like all the details are different and not only that but they don't even have the cab control roof or the cab control window or the lights here. I don't know why they just. I, I guess for the U.S. version they thought that would be cool, but I don't. I don't know. I don't really. I don't really. I don't really like that. I mean, I like it, but then I don't like it. So, um, you know, it's cool, but I don't know. I think. Yeah, it's probably. It's definitely the wheels. Yeah, they're not free rolling. I'm gonna see if changing the trucks on them are an option, but I don't think that's gonna be. I'm not gonna do that because uh, electric locomotives will probably be hauling these things um, uh, eventually and I think my camera did something silly on me because I was still talking and it just started filming again okay but anyway as I was saying uh, I don't know where I left off exactly or where the camera cut off but I was explaining that the details on here, on here are not as good as the Bachman China one. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will have more videos with HO trains with sound. And I hope you're ready for them. So you guys be cool. God bless. And I'll see you down the line. Later, everyone.